how would you fix this colossal multi-trillion dollar mess? Michael Snyder reports. Everyone can see the slow motion train wreck that's unfolding right in front of our eyes, but nobody has a plan to stop it. Unfortunately, from a short term perspective, I don't know if there's anything that can be done to prevent the commercial real estate bubble from imploding. Vacancy rates are surging to historic highs all over the nation, and without sufficient rental income, many property owners will be forced to default. In addition, a giant mountain of commercial real estate mortgages will be up for refinancing over the next few years, and substantially higher interest rates will make refinancing those mortgages exceedingly difficult. We really are facing a perfect storm for the commercial real estate industry, and the fallout is going to be absolutely devastating for U.S. banks. Now, I remember the last time uh, we had this recession, 2008, a lot of uh, Chinese entities were buying real estate in Manhattan and on Long Island just off the bridge, the 59th Street Bridge. And it's amazing what they were doing with the, with the uh, uh, high-rise uh, buildings there. Now, this is not some uh, small problem. This is, they're probably going to do it again this time. This is not a small problem. That was my comment. So this is not a small problem. Offices are sitting empty from coast to coast. And the total commercial real estate market in this country is currently valued at somewhere around $20 trillion. From Dallas to Minneapolis to New York and Los Angeles, offices sit vacant or underused, showing the staying power of the work-from-home area. But clear desks and quiet break rooms are not just a headache for bosses eager to gather teams in person. Investors and regulators on high alert for signs of trouble in the financial system following recent bank failures are now homing in on the downturn in the 20 trillion U.S. commercial real estate market. The pandemic sparked a remote work revolution, and now we have a lot of office space that is simply not needed any longer. In fact, office vacancies in Manhattan are now at the highest level ever recorded. In New York's Manhattan, Office vacancies are at the record high, Bloomberg reported last week, even as new properties come online, adding even more space to the struggling market. And in Los Angeles and Chicago, office vacancies sit at 22.5% as of the fourth quarter of 2022. This is a huge problem for property owners because many of them don't have enough tenants paying rent, obviously. So how are they going to pay their property taxes? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the enormous pile of commercial mortgages will be up for refinancing in the next couple of years. They are a bellwether for what is likely to come, as more than half of the $2.9 trillion in commercial mortgages will be up for refinancing in the next couple of years, according to Morgan Stanley. Even if current rates stay where they are, new lending rates are likely to be 35 to 4.5% points higher than they are for many of the CRE's existing mortgages, wrote Morgan Stanley Chief Investor Officer Lisa Shallot in a recent report. At the, in the end, we are going to see an unprecedented wave of defaults and commercial property prices are going to crash really hard. As I noted yesterday, Morgan Stanley is actually warning that commercial property prices could fall as much as 40%. With small and medium-sized banks accounting for 80%, of commercial real estate lending, the situation might soon get worse, experts say. Commercial property prices could fall as much as 40%, rivaling the decline during the 2008 financial crisis, forecast Morgan Stanley analysts. Actually, I believe that projection is probably too optimistic. At this point, commercial property prices are already down 15% from the peak of the market. Prices in the United States were down 15% in March from their recent peak, according to data provider Green Street. The rapid increase in interest rates over the past year has been painful, since purchases of commercial buildings are typically financed with large loans. In some markets, the carnage that we have already seen is quite breathtaking. For example, Blackstone recently sold two office towers in Southern California at a 36% loss. Private equity firm Blackstone sold two 13-story 13 13 story Class A office towers, the Griffin Tower in Santa Ana, Orange County, California, for $82 million to a joint venture between Barker Pacific Group 
and Kings Barn Realty Capital. The towers, built in 1987, have a vacancy rate of 24%. Blackstone had bought the towers in 2014 for $129 million, according to the commercial observed yesterday. The selling price makes for a loss of 36%, and Blackstone was lucky on this deal. And an office tower in Houston just sold at a loss of 47%. In Houston, Parkway Properties sold the 960,000 square foot San Felipe Plaza in Uptown to Sovereign Partners for $82.8 million in late March. The tower was built in 1984. Parkway Property ended up with the tower when it acquired Thomas Properties, which had bought the property in 2005 for $156.5 million. So that was a loss of almost 50%, 47% loss. I don't know any, why anyone would be willing to purchase commercial real estate at this stage. Trying to catch a falling knife is a very dangerous thing. Of course, commercial real estate is not the only bubble that's bursting. We have already seen the crypto bubble burst. We have seen the bond bubble burst. And residential real estate prices are starting to fall all over the nation. So far, stock prices are hanging in there, but a number of experts are warning that a big crash is just around the corner. Legendary investor Jeremy Grantham has topped the board for a, uh, an extreme prediction about U.S. stocks. The market historian has forecasted the S&P 500 could tank as much as 50% this year to about 2,000 as an everything bubble bursts. Grantham said the prices of stocks, bonds, real estate, fine art, and other investments surged to unsustainable highs during the COVID-19 pandemic. Market experts Stephanie Pomboy and Larry McDonald echoed Grantham's view, but with a less bearish prediction. While the pair expects stocks to crash as much as 30%, McDonald said the plunge could happen over the next two months as higher interest rates choke demand. Our leaders were able to artificially prop up the system for a number of years, but now they've lost control. A great financial earthquake has begun, and things are going to get really bad during the years that are in front of us. But many people out there truly believe that the, the party would last forever, and so now they're in a position to get very badly burned as the system melts down all around them. This is by Michael Snyder. He says about the author. My name is Michael. My brand new book entitled End Times is now available on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I've written six other books that are available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life that Really Matters. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short, and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. I've also started a brand new Substack newsletter, and I encourage you to subscribe so that you won't miss any of the latest updates. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, and the most important news. And the articles that I publish on those sites are published on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making legal, business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook, and Twitter. And any way that you can share these articles with others is definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. And this is on the Economic Collapse blog by Michael Snyder. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.